Hey yo everyone, I'm Lego MacGyver and welcome to something I promised a couple weeks ago in my National James Bond Day video. This is, as you can see right here, my James Bond analysis in Microsoft Excel. It's not anything too fancy at the moment, it's still very ugly anyway and such. Uh, you also see there's no webcam in this one. I decided just to use the audio track and some background music, which you'll probably be hearing now. It'll be light in the background, that way it doesn't overpower my voice, and add a bit of atmosphere to all of this, since how a regular Excel spreadsheet seems pretty boring. And of course, I've sort of hidden away all sorts of stuff so you can't see anything of my computer and whatnot, such as that, which is excellent. So we'll dive right in here. As you can see up here at the top, it says James Bond analysis. And we'll start with this sh short little thing right here. If I can highlight it. This right here, I basically took um, the six actors who have played Bond, Sir Sean Connery, Sir Roger Moore. Don't quote me on these other ones. I don't know if they are stories or not. I didn't. I, I started this years ago, so it could be changed by now. Uh, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, ugh, George Lyles, and being sorry, uh, and Daniel Craig. The way I say that about George Lyles and B is just because he's my least favorite Bond out of all of them. As this will become apparent. As you can see, we have all these categories up here at the top. Obviously, I can have many more. And as I'll say at the beginning here and at the end, I will take any and all suggestions as to further categories, suggestions about why I have certain things the way they are, and possibly even your listing for stuff that I could be, um, for me to sort of categorize. So, number of movies right here, we basically have how many movies there in six for, for, for Connery. There is technically the seventh, which is never say never again or something which I don't count and depending on who you are you don't count it either only because it happened like midway through the Roger Moore years which was basically just a remake of Thunderball in a way just with all the stuff not many people consider it in the actual running count of it you won't see it on official posters or anything but some people do just because it was a Bond movie and it had Connery in it, but yeah, the value you like because uh, Rowan Atkinson was in it. I mean, sure, I love the guy who plays Mr. Bean and all, but seriously, it's yeah. So he has six movies. Roger Moore obviously has seven. Dalton two. Brosnan four. Lazenby with the one, and Craig with four. As I am going to be counting Spectre, since how it. Technically, when I'm recording this, it is November 6th, so Spectre has come out today, so I'm counting that, but as of this recording, on the night of the 6th, I have not seen Spectre. That is why in many places where I have stuff for Daniel Craig, there are asterisks, only because since I haven't seen the movie, I can't judge at this moment. So obviously then, for the rest that you are seeing highlighted here, on a scale of 1 through 5, with being very lenient with decimals and stuff, because of course I'm the one who made this, I rated them being 1 being the worst, and 5 being the best, for rating them on all these things. So gadgets here, we have Sean Connery, obviously with 5, with Roger Moore with a quick 4.5, just because they were the original Bonds, and they had a lot more of the cooler weapons that seemed a lot less probable than some of the newer ones. Obviously Dalton with 3, only because not too many. Brosnan with a good old 4 there. Uh, Lazenby with 1 just because I can't remember what gadgets he had, but at least 1 or 2 weren't all that bad. And Craig with 2, only because we didn't get any basically until basically Skyfall, which that was mainly just a tiny little radio receiver and a uh, palm scanning wallpaper. Obviously, for suaveness, we have to give a 5 to go on Connery here, just because he was the first, he is the best, and of course, just because he is the most suave. Roger Moore with 3, as he is pretty average. Dalton being 1.5, just because I do like to consider him one of the more bloodier bronze, or the more violent, just because of the way the films were made and such. Pierce Bronson with a 4, ranking up there. Lazenby with 0. 
Yeah, no real sex appeal to that guy in my opinion, but you know, and Daniel Craig with 3.65. Only because I didn't want to give him a 3.85, he's a little better than that, but not quite a 4 or 3.75. Obviously, what you see there in villains, for Connery, you didn't see a whole lot of variety for a lot of it. They were sort of minor villains, and then you had Ernest Blofeld in the background. Which, granted, some of them were pretty nice, but for some of the other ones, like Dr. No, and then for uh, From Russia with Love, the villains were sort of lackluster. Whereas when you get up here with Roger Moore and Brosnan, you got a lot more of these, like, Rackos, who sort of had, like, different things about them that made them very unique and memorable. Dalton, yeah, I can't even remember their exact names, except that it is in License to Kill, the main villa in that is one of the brothers in Goonies. I do remember that. And let's see. Obviously, Liza B with one, only because there was a Blofeld, in which there was a different actor, only because there are only two movies that have the same Blofeld, which I don't know why they couldn't keep the consistency. I know. I have a magazine somewhere that says why. I do not have it with me at the moment. And Craig with two, only because not as unique. In Kron Masolis, nobody remembers the bad guy. I mean, nothing special about him. He's trying to cause a drought. Um, in Casino Royale, Le Chief, who is one of my favorites, as I love uh, Mads Mikkelsen. Um, wasn't that bad. I mean, he had the scar, but... There really wasn't anything else about him. And then we see Silva, Raul Silva in Skyfall, who, yeah, he was he was pretty cool. At the same time, not. Then of course we have over here at Guns, which is a little hard to say, mainly just because of judging on the guns Bond used, not anybody else. In which all of them are pretty the same across the board. Obviously, me still not liking that as a B, but of course all of them using the classic Walter. Although Roger Moore using a slightly different version in some, along with revolvers here and there, along with Dalton, especially in License to Kill. Uh, cars, obviously Lazenby, he had like one car and it wasn't an Aston Martin, I believe. Obviously we have Pierce Brosnan and Connery tied for five, just because Connery had the original Goldfinger Aston Martin BB5. One of the best looking cars ever made, and that's a fact. And of course, Pierce Brosnan also with the Aston Martin Vanquish, or as Q calls it, the Vanish in Die Another Day, where it disappears. Obviously, we have Roger Moore as well, and Craig, especially with the newer Aston Martins, the DBS, and with the new DB10 coming out. I may be changing that for to a 5 once I see Spectre. Then we have places into obviously Lazenby. Like half the movie takes place in like one mountain base, which isn't all that exciting in my opinion. So one to him. Dalton, not all that memorable in my opinion, sort of generic. Uh, Daniel Craig 3.5 just because not all that out there, a lot of those movies were spent in mainly one place. Not that that's a bad thing, but just not as exciting places. Then we have, let's see, Connery with four, just because he started out and we see a lot more variety. Otherwise, we have Brosnan and Moore here tied for five. Moore, we got a lot of beautiful places, such as in The Spy Who Loved Me, where a lot of it takes place out in sea and then in Egypt and in space and one of my favorites the James Bond Islands in I think Vietnam it is it is in that lower um, Eastern Asia segment where these islands that you see in <clears throat> goodness me in the man with the golden gun one of my favorite places because it's so beautiful and then Boston as well just for going to places like Cuba, where there's the huge satellite dish and golden eye, and things like Iceland and Die Another Day, lots of just really cool places. And yeah, Daniel Craig, man. Bond Girls, of course, one of the signature things about Bond. Lazenby, 1.5. I have to give him a little bit of edge here just because <laughs> the thing is, is 
there were so many women in that one, it was ridiculous that there wasn't like a single Bond girl to characterize for it. Here, Timothy Dalton with two just because he did have two Bond girls, but they were meh. One of them was a, I think, a cello assassin or something, which didn't really play any other part for the rest of the film. And then the other one, yeah, he just happened across who he actually tried to stop to kill to later kill, I think, towards the end just to get in with the bad guy. It was weird, that movie, License to Kill. Um, here we have at three, Roger Moore, just because we did have some wonderful women like Domino and Goodnight, I believe, who were really lovely. And at four, we have Pierce Brosnan, I mean, Halle Berry. She's, she's good looking and die another day. Along with some of the other ones, um, not so much paying attention to Goldeneye, I think, only because, in my heart, it's because of Sean Bean. Uh, let's see, 4.5 for Craig and Connery, I mean, and Connery set the bar just because of all the women in those movies, and of course we get scenes like in Goldfinger where she's covered in gold, and then Daniel Craig paying a homage to that in Quantum of Solace. We see, I believe her name is Strawberry Fields in the movie, getting covered in oil. For a henchman, we see Dalton, Eisenby, and Craig all with ones. Just because in Honor Magistry's Secret Service, I don't think there was a henchman. And Craig, it's hard to really pick any of them out for any movie, basically. And Dalton, they were just such obscure movies that yeah it was hard to pick out. Then we see Connery with a 2 which is very low as many of you may think. And that's mainly just because with those it was a lot more about the villains and stuff and the women than the actual henchmen that came after them. Same with Brosnan with a 3. We had a lot of some cool ones like Zhao in Die Another Day who was pretty cool and I love the actor who plays him. And, yeah, otherwise we have more coming up with the four here, just because we had Jaws, who is personally one of my favorite, just because he not showed up in not only one, but two movies consecutive in The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker, and I absolutely love the actor who plays him, I believe it's Richard Keel, who is actually a very tall man. And, as I found out in the magazine I just bought today, he could actually only rear the metal teeth in his mouth for about 30 seconds. It doesn't go to explain why, but I thought that was very interesting. And then video games. I'm not really sure how I graded this as to how many they're in, or the movies that are in a video game, or the actors who are in the video game. I can't really much tell. All I know is Lazenby, obviously low, Dalton, low, all of them very low, except for Bronson and Craig, only I think because of the remakes like 007 GoldenEye, 007 Reloaded, which had a bunch of films, there was GoldenEye Reloaded, and all of those, and then of course we see this empty total, only because I may add more sections here to grade them on, but at the moment that's all I have. Then scrolling down here to the bottom a little bit, we have for each actor the best sort of things for their entire movie franchise for each actor. So starting out here we have Best Car with Connery obviously with the Aston Martin DB5, more with the Lotus Esprit from Ah, Spy Who Loved Me, yes, I believe to where it's actually a submersible toy, which is very nice. Uh, Dalton with the Aston Martin V8 Vantage Volante. Yeah, I don't know why it was in one of the movies. Uh, Barton obviously with the Vanquish. That has to be with none. There's a vehicle in it, I don't know what it is. And then Dalton, and not uh, Dalton, Craig, as we will see for the rest of these highlighted. All of these have the asterisk just because I haven't seen Spectre yet, therefore these are not final answers along with all of these, but specifically Craig only because I haven't seen Spectre. So obviously for him, 
we have the Aston Martin DBS version 12, which was in Casino Royale. Yes, sorry. And also the DB5 was featured in Skyfall, going on down to gadgets, Connery and more are blank. These are the only two blanks I have anywhere on here, only because there are so many beautiful, wonderful gadgets. And to actually find all of them, I actually want to watch all of their movies first and take good, careful notes before I can choose for either one of them. Obviously, with Azumi, there were none. I don't even think he got. Yeah, I don't know if he got any gadgets. With Dalton, it is the camera gun, which, if you notice, a couple. Eh, it's probably more of a month ago on my blog. I posted some screenshots of a camera gun. No, not camera gun. No, I haven't done the camera gun yet. Sorry. Speaking, speaking too soon. I made the Connery radio gun. So forget what I just said. Never mind. Blah, blah, blah. Alright, moving on to Brosden. We have the ballpoint pen. Obviously, the most wonderful gadget as we see in Golden Eye. Just because of the fact of him joking around with Q of clicking it three times and unclicking it. And just to give you some added effect. How many times did I click it and will I explode? Will we, let's find out. Nope. Alright, and then of course Craig with the Palm Reader PPK? Possibly? We really didn't get any gadgets until Skyfall, so it's hard to pick from him. Then, of course, the best henchman. Craig? None. Lazenby? None. Dalton? None. Frozen? Obviously, Zao from Die Another Day. More, we have Jaws, of course, and then Connery with Odd Job. Of course, him being one of my favorite henchmen back up here in this henchman column. I may move that two up to a three, it's just been a while since I've seen a lot of the Connery films. And then moving on to here with the best villain, Connery with obviously Auric Goldfinger from Goldfinger, probably my favorite of the Connery movies. More with Francisco Scaramanga, which if any of you know was played by the wonderful Christopher Lee. May he rest in peace as he passed away this past June or July. He was a wonderful Bond villain, a wonderful Dracula, Saruman, and all of that. Dalton? None. I can't bother to remember them. Brosnan, obviously. Gustav Graves, who is from Die Another Day. If you're not catching the point, that is my favorite of the Bond films out of all of them, and especially of Brosnan. Lazenby, the one and only, unfortunately, Onus Blofeld, because that's all I was in there. Then Craig, currently a tie between Raul Silva and Le Chief. only because I haven't seen Spectre yet, and they were both so such minor villains that they sort of tied up there. I mean, one's a banker and the one wants revenge on M. And a little more to Silva, but more importantly, best Bond girl, Connery, we have Honey Rider. Who, if you're not familiar, is the Bond girl from Dr. No, the first Bond girl. Then moving on to more, we have Mary Goodnight, who, if my memory serves me correctly, as it should, is the Bond girl from The Man with the Golden Gun. Dalton, we have Pam Bouvier, Bouvier, I don't know for sure, but I know she's from License to Kill. Brosnan, obviously, Jinx from Die Another Day. We love Halle Berry here. Lazenby, none, just because there were so many and none of them were memorable. Craig, currently just Eve Money Penny, though that's questionable only because I really do love the actor Olga Kurenko, who was the Bond girl in Quantum of Solace. As so, it's sort of hard to tell with Craig. I mean, once I see Spectre, I may have a more favorite. But at the moment, Eve Money Penny, only because I know her actor a little bit more. Who, if you don't know, was the same actor, actress as Tia Dolma in Pirates of the Caribbean. Then Best Plays is sent to Connery. Been a while, so I had Port Knox. Only because you never would have, would have thought that. More, obviously, the Bond Islands as seen in Man with the Golden Gun. Dalton, none. Barson, obviously, Iceland from Die Another Day. Lazenby, none. And Craig, at the moment, 
Skyfall Scotland? Question mark? Just because I love the scenery they own. Moving on up, we have Best Thingy. This was recently added this week. Obviously, as you can tell from the difference in typing. Connery, we have Goldfinger, who I can't remember the actress. Oh, wait. Of the Best of Bond, James, 50 Years, 50 Tracks album. Right next to me. I can look it up right here. Shirley Basie, yes, who does Goldfinger. Wonderful theme from the Sean Connery era. Besides, of course, the James Bond theme in Doctor No, but we're not going to count that here. Even though here in Lands and Beef, we have the On Her Majesty Secret Service theme, only because that was the title theme played during it. Uh, and then we move to more with View to a Kill by Duran Duran. Probably the one of the top ones done for all of the James Bond career for themes. Dalton, obviously, we have Living Daylight freaking right up there in the 80s, done by the one and only Aha. Brosnan, obviously, we have Dying of the Day by Crush of Belief, Madonna of all people, you wouldn't think. Then Honor Majesty Secret Service, the theme, which is wonderful, I absolutely love playing it on the trumpet, and then Craig, I have it on here, and I may take away that asterisk, only because the theme did come out before I've seen the movie, with Spectre, even though it's not the theme, the theme, it's Writing on the Wall by Sam Smith, I absolutely love it to death, but then again, I love all of the Daniel Craig themes, except, um, the one from Chrono Masolis, Another Way to Die by Jack Ryan and Alicia Keys. Not a fan of that. This doesn't feel weird. Otherwise, you know my name by Chris Cornell and Adele Skyball. All very beautiful. And then, of course, finally, best movie for all the actors. Obviously, for Connery, it is Goldfinger with Mort's Man with the Golden Gun. Hmm, there's a gold thing going on. Dalton, The Living Daylights. Bronson die another day. Lazenby, I have no other choice. Even though I don't like it, I'm still gonna put it regardless. And then currently it's Skyfall for Daniel Craig, even though I haven't seen Spectre yet. Then we come over here to the side. And I will see if I can center it a little more. We have this other new column, which I tried to rank all the movies in order by my most favorite is. Which of course is isn't final just because I've not seen Spectre and some of these movies it has been five over five years since I've watched some of them in fact I'm willing to bet 60% of them I've not watched in over five years so it's a little hard to judge so I'm sort of just going off from what I remember and certain pieces of it I mean pretty much things from seven through I mean, the first about eight or so, I knew pretty well. The last about five, I knew, but everything else in the middle, I didn't really know that well. So obviously, going down the list, we have Die Another Day as my current favorite, followed by Skyfall. And then, probably a tie between GoldenEye and Goldfinger for third, so I currently put them in this order right now. Followed by Casino Royale, Man of the Golden Gun, A View to a Kill, The Living Daylight, The Spy Low to Me, blah blah blah, so on and so forth. And then we obviously we have OHMSS, Honor Majesty, Secret Service as last. I don't think I need to go through the rest of them, but yes. As in B, I'm so sorry, you will always be at my bottom. But you're a Bond, so you do have my respect for that. And so, yes, everyone, that is my James Bond analysis. That is currently up to date. Before I've seen Spectre, I may edit it at some point again. And, yes, I may put this out again before the new year, like I mentioned in National James Bond Day video. I may not. Hard to tell at this moment. But... If you would like to know anything more, please drop a comment here in the description on my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or my blog, any of those places, about anything James Bond related or anything about me and James Bond. Leave a comment and I will get back to you. That is, if I get a notifier, otherwise I may not. Who knows with all this new YouTube stuff going on. But I will leave you there. I have been Lego MacGyver, and I will see you all next time.